to have the most fun. The risk is, though, the fear of looking insane. Because you think, OK, if I act like a kid again, if I'm playful, if I slide down banisters, if I start enjoying myself, what are other people going to think? Doesn't matter what they think. Whatever anyone thinks is bullshit. It's what you think. So I'm going to open the floor to questions. You've been a, um, a great audience. Uh, any questions? Yes, sir. What's the orange for? The orange is, were you listening? The orange is uh, your breakfast. Well, what the orange symbolizes is the juice that comes out the orange. Yeah. And you, you have emotions, right? But an orange is an orange. You can be whatever fruit you want to be. That sounds a bit kinky. Yeah. OK. What's the difference between charisma and enthusiasm? OK. What's the difference between charisma and enthusiasm? Uh, I think enthusiasm is reveling in the challenge and thinking you're going to apply your skill to something. Uh, you can be enthusiastic picking up a shelf. You can be enthusiastic digging a hole. Charisma is about interacting with people, uh, about being emotionally contagious. Now, enthusiasm does create emotions in yourself, and they do rub off. Um, but for me, my, my overall look at charisma is, well, there's actually seven parts. It's not always convenient, always seven. But it's your belief, your attitude to life, uh, your spontaneity, that's not running out of things to say. Your charm, which is how you make people feel in your presence. Your actual presence. Um, also, your ability to connect to people. And lastly, your conversation skills in terms of rhetoric. So your ability to influence as you speak. So I hope that helps. So for me, enthusiasm is more about if you're going to jump into something. So if I see that situation where, oh god, there's somebody I can go and talk to. Yep, let's give it a go. Uh, of course, that's going to carry off some emotion uh, as I go in. Yes, sir? So how do you go from being somebody who spends a lot of their life getting um, sort of data points on how you should feel or that from other people to actually just not giving a fuck and just going, well, you know, I just, I'm having fun or, or whatever. Like that initial first step, like going, it doesn't matter. Okay, excellent question. So you're, you're saying, how can you start getting evidence for yourself that you're awesome, rather than waiting for the world to tell you that you're awesome? I again, it comes down to how you look at the world. If you want to do it straight away, it's, it's looking for the best in everything. Um, so in the situation I gave in the talk where the Ferrari's pulling along, our perspective generally is, who's this guy who's just cut in front of everyone, and now he's using the space of the ambulance? But if we can be objective and say, well, you know what, from another perspective, it could be that that guy is just in a mad rush and um, you know, there's no problem at all. So a way I look at it is this. Um, negative emotions are great. Everyone says, oh, be positive. Yeah, positive emotions are awesome as well. But you're born with negative emotions for a reason. For starters, it's where all humor comes from. You know, if we had no negative emotions, comedy would be boring as. The trick, though, is to turn the negative stuff when it happens into a positive. So the way I love doing that is playing that game from the Pollyanna book. It's just thinking, that's great, because, um, for example, I step outside and it starts pouring with rain. Ah, oh, that's great. I could do with a shower. I haven't had one for a few days. Or let's say something more extreme happens. Let's say I'm unfortunate enough to get my leg blown off. Could happen. Um, hopefully not on this stage. It would be a bit of a death trap if it would. But let's say I lose my leg, and I hope I, I hope I do keep it. But if it disappears, oh well, at least my trousers last twice as long now. Or do you know what? I'm going to have the most convincing pirate impression you've ever seen. <laughs> now I just need to lose this for a hook. So it's how I interpret the world that keeps me upbeat and happy. It's nice when the world pats us on the back. Uh, you know, it is. But that's all fickle. We can have a really nice sports car, but then that can be taken away from us. We can have lots of money in the bank, and that can disappear. The only thing you have any consistency over is your reaction. So focus on how you're reacting to the world when it gives you stim stimulus. You know the world is affecting you, and the world around you is affecting you, when you feel an emotion to something. 
So if you're stuck in traffic and you feel an emotion, that's the world around you affecting you. When you feel that emotion, how are you going to deal with it? How are you going to make that emotion as happy as possible? Can you turn it into a game? Can it be fun? Can it be like, ah, oh, do you know what? I'm late for this meeting, but check me out, do my own thing. Turning up the radio. Or you can just go, oh my god, I'm going to be late for this meeting. There's nothing you can do about it. All fear exists in the future, stuff that hasn't happened yet. All sadness exists in the past. And all happiness exists right now in this moment. And that's the only thing you own, is just the moment. Being aware of everything that's going on and enjoying every damn minute of it. You'll know if you can do that or not, if you can enjoy the moment. Go somewhere that's completely boring. Go to a room with four white walls and sit in there. And if you can be happy on your own in that room, then you've cracked it, you've mastered it. Now that I think about it, a lot of insane people get put in four walls. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, there's a bit of a correlation. Yes? Yes, uh, my question is, uh, what about the sort of classic charismatic bad boy type? Hi there, what about the, uh, the classic kind of uh, charismatic bad boy type character uh, with, you know, uh, sort of being and reactive and that kind of thing? Sure. Um, if you're that sort of persona, if you're a bit of a bird boy, uh, is that person, first of all, two questions, is that person making the person he's speaking to feel an emotion? And two, is he dealing with the emotions they come, as they come towards him? And I think the answer in both cases is yes. So, for example, he knows who he is in the world, doesn't give a damn, is just himself. My intention is to always try and leave people better off than you meet them. But, you know, he goes in, chats to somebody, gives the girl butterflies maybe, and then, um, you know, she gives him a slap, I don't know. She's just unreactive to it. So he's deciding how he's going to filter the emotions when they get given to him. Yes, sir. You mentioned your book earlier on. What's it called and where can you get it from? Okay, uh, I'm a terrible marketer. So if I was better, I'd be selling that and going, and you can buy my 89 DVD uh, set. But um, my book is free and it's from my website, yourcharismacoach.com. And that will tell you all the techniques that I used to become a better conversationalist. But the emotions are everything. Conversation and the ability to talk to people, it's a bit like a water slide. The flume allows the water to go down the slide, right? And that's the conversation. The water itself is the emotion. If you've got a slide with no water, you get a really sore bum. Or if you've got the water and no slide, that's called a waterfall. So the ability to connect to people, you need the conversation to a point because it allows you that, that channel of communication. But the emotion you then put down it is everything. Feel that emotion yourself first. So, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>